What is good, YouTube? Quinn Wade, basketball analysis coming to you with that rookie analysis. We're going to break down the top 11 rookies and evaluate what they have done for their teams. We're going to start with Andrew Neepart. He ended up beating the Warriors not too long ago. So that was a great moment for him and a thing that may really made him happy. He's playing underneath Tyrese Halliburton, so the minutes isn't going to be there. The production has been great outside of that. He's averaging 8 points, 3.8 assists, 3.1 rebounds, 87% from the free throw line, 38% from three, 46% from the field. He's only playing 26 minutes, but he's played 32 games and started 30, 23 of them. I just think he has had a great season. He's been speedy. He's been quick. He's finishing the floater as well. He's getting to the basket. He's finishing the spot-up threes well. He's not getting to the free-throw line frequently, but showing potential to be a great free-throw shooter. He's fouling a, a little bit too much in the minutes that he has. Can't stay in front of guys um, as well as you would like. A little too reach-happy. Also, that's something that you want to control a little bit more if you're him. Um, he's turning over the ball a little too much in certain games. In certain games, he doesn't have the ball in his hand enough, so you can't really know if he's a great passer um, and, and a bigger load, even though he had ch chances to prove it. He just didn't do it long enough for me to know if he's really, really great at it. Um, other than that, I have loved what I have seen out of him. This isn't the deepest um, draft when it comes to guys performing well. They all have been having okay to decent seasons as rookies. That's something that you would take if you're the NBA because you just hope they can build upon it and just continue to do better in the future. And I feel like number 10 is Jeremy Sohan. He was a guy that wasn't even listed on this list last month and a month before but he has really come on strong out of Baylor I liked him in the draft I feel like he was a lottery pick he averaged a nine points 4.8 rebounds 2.4 assists his defense is a lot of activity he's jumping he's running he's reaching he's trying to go for the steals he's trying to go for the blocks he's great at setting screens and finding guys with quick passes especially in transition He's grabbing four rebounds, 58% from the free throw shooting. Didn't expect him to be a great free throw shooter as a rookie. He hasn't been one yet. He also doesn't shoot the ball three. That wasn't his strong. His ability was shooting. So I knew he was going to struggle shooting the ball as he was a guy that usually finished with the dunk or a layup or a push shot. And that's why he's shooting 46% from the field. His best strength is staying around the basket. And he's also only playing 25 minutes. He's played 30 games. He's started 27 of them. And that's when you see the increase since he's been starting and been a fixture in that team. He's been playing a lot better. Anytime you can average nine points, four and two as a rookie, that's a good start to your career. Most rookies can't get that many points. And it's only really been um, 11 of them that has been able to get past the nine point mark. And even Andrew is struggling to get there as you have to have the minutes, you have to have the talent, you have to have the ability to put the ball in the basket against the best athletes in the world. And Jeremy has been able to figure out a way to get that done while still trying to be a great defender. He's still not a great defender as an NBA player just yet, but he's trying to get to that solid. And then you get from solid to good, then good to great. But I like the fact that he tries and he, and he puts effort and he used his momentum well trying to stay in front of guys and, and, and cover space to be a great help defender. And I like what I have seen out of him. Walker Kessler is another guy that you have to give credit to just because he really has defended the ball well when it comes to blocking shots. He has been doing more than Rudy Gobert, who was actually in that trade. He's not a better defender or rim protector than Rudy Gobert, but he has defended that ball well, blocking shots at 1.8 clip per game. That's a huge mark for a rookie. He's getting 6.9 points, 0 0.2 steals, but he's also averaging 6.5 rebounds, and he's shooting 72% from the field, 
and he's only played 36 games, but he started six of them and really has been a deterrent guy at that realm. He's only 21 years old. He's a legit 7'2", 245. He has good hands. He has good finesse touch. And the fact that he has the speed and quickness to get to the ball and block it makes him a, a guy that can be a starter in his league for another 10-plus years if he doesn't get injured. And he can be a guy that can be a potential double-double threat that can be a 10 and 10 guy or a 12 and 10 guy with two blocks per game, maybe even 2.5 blocks per game in the future as he learns how to rotate, um, use verticality to his advantage, and also post up a little bit. He can be able to hit a hook shot or a little push shot along with the dunking. He can be a, a great scorer in his league for a center. He might not be 20 and 10. They might be asking a little bit too much from him. <laughs> But he can be a double-double, and that would be great because you get a good center that can develop and grow and be a great rim protector, and you get the picks. It just shows you that that trade wasn't that bad for Trainer Danny. He knew something that we didn't know, and he got a diamond in the rough And Walker Kessler. I love what I have seen out of him so far, and he has really been great for them. They needed somebody to be a rim protector with – um Mark Lord marking and not being known for defense and I feel like they have a strong and big and long to protect that paint and Walker Kessler has been able to fill that void that they didn't have very nicely and great and beautifully and I feel like he even played a little elegant in that paint. A gentle giant is what I call Walker Kessler, even though he can be very um uh, persuasive with the blocks as a strong guy too in that paint. Then you look at A.J. Griffin, he has done a fantastic job of fitting in, complimenting Trey Young and DeJounte and John Collins by hitting a three, 37% from three. He's also been getting out in transition and having fun, 46% from the field. He also has played 32 games and started a couple of them and has really been a difference maker in that 21 minutes. And even if he comes off the bench, he's giving you 10 points per game. He has shot the ball better and scored the ball better than I have ever thought that he would coming out of college. I think he has put the work in. He has developed greatly and has been a great complimentary player for the Atlanta Hawks. I have him at number um, eight already just because he has really grown and improved as a player. He's trying to be a better defender too. Hopefully he can be become one of the best 3 and D guys. He already has the three ball at 37% figured out. And he has been able to do that consistently through the season. Now he has to up his defense a little bit more if he wants to be a great defender. He just has to put in the work on his game like he did offensively. And he'll turn out to be great defensively. I love what I have seen out of him um, as a player. He has been one of the must-watch rookies this year just because of his growth and improvement from Duke on to the NBA and I feel like they make his job easier by being able to break down the defense. He just has to finish the play and he has done an exceptional job at that. Number seven, I have Jalen Williams, 11 points, 3.7 rebounds, 2.6 assists. I think he has done a good job of being a hybrid player, a combo guard that can handle the ball, get to the basket. He can also hit a mid range. He can hit a three. He can, you know, be a hybrid player that can also handle the ball and make decisions. I feel like he has been a decent defender, um, knowing where to be at, communicating well with guys. You don't expect him to be great or amazing because he's a rookie. He's still got things he has to figure out. You really want that three ball to develop just because he would be good for off ball for Shea especially if he can get more attempts about the four to five range will be nice. He's shooting a great 51% from the field. Most rookies can't shoot that efficiently from the field, but he's smart and he had a lot of transition opportunities where he really succeeds at finishing well. 27 minutes, 19 games started out of 32. He has really been one of the best players on this team and I have loved what I have seen out of him. He's mature, he's smart, he's patient and he doesn't rush the game, and he wants to be great at this game. I can really see him being a star for them in the future, and he has already shown that already. Jalen Duran has been great in the NBA so far. Um, he has moved up this list just because he rebounds the ball well. 8.4 rebounds 
is outstanding for a rookie, and he has the ability to get the 10 if he can continue to play hard and continue to compete on the boards. He also finishes the ball well, 7.4 points, and he's also passing when he doesn't have a shot or if he gets a rebound, he's outletting it to the guys for a transition. If you have a guy like Jaden Ivey, you might as well do that as he's a blur offensively. Um, he's also shooting 56% from the free throw line. That's something you want to see him improve, get to the 70% mark. 62% from the field is just a great. He's shooting worse than Walker Kessler, but he's still been going up as the months has been flying by, and he's doing great in that perspective. He's getting 1.2 turnovers. That's something that you would like to see, um, honestly and truthfully. And then 2.6 personal fouls. Within 24 minutes, you want to stay below three. He's been able to do that so far. He's not a foul happy guy. He does contest and go for shot blocks, but he's not fouling as much, even when he's trying to strip the ball from guys. But I think he can do a better job of doing it more clean, doing it more swiftly, and going up with more strength. Um, but he's a rookie. That's just criticisms that he can critique his game and get better at and just finishing better, just getting there quicker, being in those open gaps a lot faster and just taking advantage of it. It takes some time to get coronation with your teammates. But I love what I have seen out of him. Jabari Smith. I feel like has dropped a little bit. He hasn't been able to score as well as people thought. People looked at him as a guy out of college that can really be a, a huge difference maker, and he hasn't really been that in the NBA. Guys are just as big and just as strong as him, and they've been taking away that advantage that he had in college and high school away quickly. He needs to develop a, a good spot up mid-range a good spot up three. He needs to be able to take the ball off the dribble and get all the way to the basket and finish with strength and force. I think he's lacking that. He's too finesse. He's too soft. He's too easy to pick up. I feel like he has a rebound at the ball well. 7.0 is pretty good for a small forward slash power forward, but he can improve there by boxing out more, being more alert, being more sound uh, when it comes to trying to figure out how to get the rebound and how to do it more aggressively. I think he needs to be, you know, in areas quicker. He needs to be smarter, you know, approaching how to get the basketball. And I think he can get up to eight to nine. 3.1 personal fouls is too much. He's fouling because they want him to defend some of the best players in the world. You just have to be smarter um, when you're reaching and when you're going for block. It seems like he quits or he, he doesn't feel like he can defend them or he just feel like he has to foul them because he can't guard them. Those are the plays that help you lose games. Those are not plays that help you win. You have to have higher self-esteem. You have to be smarter and more patient, and you have to really have the know-how. You have to communicate with your team. You have to do it together. You're not going to stop great players doing it by yourself. You all have to do it as a collective, and I feel like he, he feels like he can do it, and he feels like he can't, and you just need your teammates to be there for you. I know this is a young team. You don't have too many people that's great defenders on your roster, but you have to just take time with the footage and take time with yourself to get that figured out. 1.3 turnovers is pretty high for a guy that doesn't use the ball too much and make too many decisions. And if he does it just to score, I think he got to cut that down to in the zeros. 12 points is pretty decent. I think he should be in the 15-point range, but he just can't score the ball as well. Even at the three-point line, he's only shooting 33%. That's up a little bit, <clears throat> but he can get that higher because he gets a lot of spot-up opportunities. <clears throat> you just have to knock them down. It's tough to knock down the, the contested ones or the ones when they rotate high, but some of his are practice shots. He just had to be a lot more wittier and just continue to hold his follow-through. He showed that he can shoot threes. It takes some time to get acclimated to the three-point line in the, th in the NBA because it's longer and further, but he should be able to do that by the time the season is over. Same with taking the ball and getting to the basket. After a while, you yeah, get used to the speed and the quickness and the physicality of the NBA, but he should be able to figure that out. He's been figuring out in October. He got way better at it in November. We should see more growth from him in 
um, in January because I seen a little bit of it in December, but he should have more growth in January, and we'll see if he's able to accomplish that goal. But he's been decent um, compared to where he was before. I feel like he was terrible. Now he's okay. Now he's got to get to good. And it's tough to do that in the NBA because their job is to make sure you don't get there as defenders and as players. But you have to want it for yourself and be great and get there by putting in the work and not cheating the game. And we'll see if he does that. Keegan Murray um, has been better than um, he started the season a little rocky in October. He started getting a little better in November. I feel like he has got to that role player level in December where he can space the floor off the ball and he can do a little bit on the ball and he can get out in transition 42% from the field. He also shot 38% from three and a good 76% from the free throw line, 3.8 rebounds. Um, he also had 2.0 personal fouls, which is okay. And 1.1 turnovers, 11.5 points, which is decent. For him, he's scoring the ball as a role player. You got to take that in consideration that the efficiency isn't terrible, especially considering that it was worse in the other months than it has been in this month. And I feel like December really showed that he can really be a Robert Horry type of guy where he can hit big shots, make big plays without being a guy. And he can complement the offense kind of like an A.J. Griffin and a Jabari Smith, but he's just having a better season just because he's scoring more points, he's getting the rebounds, and he's getting the assists. Um, I think he can pass more. He can be more of a facilitator. He can be more of a hockey assist guy like he's been, and he can be a better defender. Um, I think he can play more minutes, too, and that can get him up um, because I feel like he's been one of the most productive players in the league. Um, I also feel like this guy is just one of the smartest players in the league as a rookie. And he's really been using that to his advantage. I feel like he really developed a lot at Iowa. Maybe he can have a great second half um, in the NBA like he did at Iowa. That would be great to see. And then Jaden Ivey, he's been speeding <clears throat> past a lot of guys. You mainly want to see him improve as a, facilita a facilitator. I feel like he can improve as a passer. Um, I, I feel like that's been his, his biggest weakness is as a passer, he scores the ball pretty well for a point guard. He's at 41% from the field, 31% from three, and 73% from the free throw line. He really hasn't been able to do as much as he would like as a point guard since K went down. He hasn't been able to keep the efficiency as high as it was before, but the raw numbers are pretty good. He, he can score in the paint, he can get to the basket, he knows how to use his speed to his advantage. He knows how to finish in transition and use that to his advantage. He also knows how to play in the passing lanes. I feel like he is very good at what he does, and I just hope he can learn how to shoot too, if he can improve his perimeter shot from mid-range and his floater game and his three-point game. He can really become a De'Aaron Fox type of guy to where he can use the pick and roll to his advantage while also being able to get to the basket and get to the floater package as well as he can very efficiently. But he can also use that three ball so where if they sag off, he don't have to shoot too many of them. He's only shooting four, but that's about the range you want him at. You want him to use that, that athleticism and that quickness to the best of his ability while still making sure the defense is honest and still making them pick and choose what they want to lose by. You always want them to pick their poison, not your poison. And I feel like he don't have enough offensive moves to really make the defenders pick their poison. They know he wants to get to the basket. They know they want that he wants to get, you know, that, that pass to a big, which is predictable. He needs to add more moves with the handle too. So that way he can be able to get to the basket in more variety of ways. He kind of remind me of a Jalen Brown that you know he wants to jump and dunk and you know he wants to get to the layup. You know he wants to get in transition, but he don't really have no moves outside of that. But he needs to add the, the jump shot. He needs to add the Euro step. He needs to add the crossovers. 
and the, the behind the back moves and he needs to have to spot up three and a three when if they sag you off four feet you can pull up and hit it in their face and then you're looking at a guy that can get you 22 to 23 points per game and get you seven assists just because they have to collapse and if they collapse you can kick out or lob it or even hit a somebody for the mid-range and then the game just become easier for your teammates and then the assist is just easier for you because you already know the decision that they have to make and then Benedict Mathurin I feel like he's been good this season he has re really regressed numbers wise but I, I don't really know what you expect him to do he has a situation where he has players that's better ahead of him for winning now and he just has to accept that he's averaging 17 points, 3.9 rebounds, 1.5 assists. I feel like he has accepted his role as a guy off the bench. He has been a flamethrower um, other than that. And I feel like he also has been efficient, even though his efficiency has dropped 41% from the field, 33% um, from three, um, 3.9 rebounds, 1.5 assists. Uh, 1.8 turnovers. He also only played 28 minutes. I feel like his numbers have really regressed from the start of the season where it was actually a conversation where he can win rookie of the year. Now it's not too much of a conversation. He's still having 20 point games off the bench though and that's something that you got to give him credit for. He really declined a lot over the months because he's only averaging 14 points per game in the month of December. He's shooting a terrible 39% from the field, 21% from three. And that was compared to the numbers that was higher, 38% from three and 42% from the field. And even in November, he was, and even in October, he was shooting 45% from the field and 42% from three. He's hitting the rookie wall a little bit. He's getting a little inconsistent because his minutes are here and there. His lineups are here and there, and he hasn't been able to get the consistency that he needs from the team and from the coach to play well each and every night. But he can't make no excuse. He comes off the bench. That's part of how the game goes. They just need you in spurts. They just need you to play well um, in, in spurts. And whatever minutes you get, whatever lineup you're out there with, you just have to make boys do. And I feel like he really has struggled with that this season. It seemed like he was really ready to go. And then the inconsistency of minutes and touches and how they utilize them has really thrown him off guard and made him go a little worse. Um, other than that, Paulo Bencaro is Rookie of the Month again for December, and especially for the Eastern Conference. For the Western Conference is Keegan Murray. For the Eastern Conference is Paulo Bencaro. I love what I have seen out of him. His game log shows you that he's a bucket each and every month. He's been able to average about 20 points in, in the month of December. He declined to 19.1 points per game on 40% from the field and 33% from three, 78% from the free throw line. But he still grabbed 6.5 rebounds, 4.1 assists, and 1.1 steal. And he's getting 2.45 personal fouls and three turnovers per game. He's getting a little sloppier. Is getting a little tougher. Teams are game planning for him. Teams are trying to stop him. Teams are trying to make it tougher for him and on him. And I feel like he just has to be a lot smarter out there and a lot more patient and let things come to him more. And then he's getting a lot of inconsistencies with the lineups. They're changing a lot of things out there on the fly. And a lot of guys are coming in and in and out of the lineup. So it takes some time to get adjusted to that. And I started seeing him struggle with certain teammates. They don't space the floor enough or they don't give him enough room in that mid-range area for him to do his thing. But he's really just stayed positive about it. And they've been winning a lot more. So his numbers might be down offensively and efficiently, but the wins have been up. So you will take that if you Paulo. But he's still averaging 20 points on the season. 20.9 and be exact, 3-point turnover, 3.0, 2.4 personal fouls, 0 0.6 blocks, 3.9 assists, 6.7 rebounds, and 75% from the free throw line. He's shooting 30% from three and 43% from the field. You just hope he has a better January. The game is starting to slow down. The game is starting to make more sense to him. He has been able to transition into the game a lot easier than a lot of other rookies. And the numbers are a result and have shown that to the fullest extent.
but I do feel like when it comes to scoring the basketball, he needs to get the mid-range back to where it was in October where he's knocking those mid-range jumpers down easier. He's posting up a lot, but he's not getting the shots that he wants. It's a lot tougher, and he's getting to the free throw line. Pretty great for a rookie. Rookie usually don't get to the free throw line a lot. And I feel like he's been able to really do that well, but he's also has to knock them down more efficiently. And I feel like it's tiring. You know, this is a long season. It takes a lot on your body. You have to get adjusted to that. And I feel like there's no real adjustment to it. You just have to do it better and do it a lot, you know, taught wise You have to figure out how to get your body ready and prepared for the physicality and for the longevity of the season. They have already played more games than what they would have played in college almost. And I feel like Paulo has to get used to that just like every other rookie, but he has been the most dominant. He has been the most great, great rookie. He's having a rookie season better than Lucas, better than KD's, better than LeBron, better than Melo, better than Kyrie. He's up there with Blake Griffin. He's up there with Carl Anthony Towns. He's up there with some of the other rookies that have had great seasons over the last 20 years, the last 30 years. You know, anytime you can average 20 points per game, that's tough to do as a rookie just because everybody knows your game after a while and then you don't really know what to add because you've been doing it so long that you need to be able to expand it after a while. But it takes time figuring out what to do as teams already know what to do against you. That's why the rookie wall was created as a term. Teams figure you out, but you have to figure out what's the way to counter what they do to you. And I feel like Paulo don't have enough moves to really do that but that's why you have to figure out new ones and I feel like he has been able to show that he's been able to convert the best out of all rookies but he also have to keep it up you know this award isn't going to fall in his hands this award is just not going to be his you know guys can still come back there's a lot of games and a lot of months still left to go for this award to be his but he has had a phenomenal season he has really surprised me with the numbers but he has to keep going and stay healthy. And he also has to learn other ways to be effective and other ways to score the basketball just so he can be the best player he can be and up his numbers. You don't want to keep him the same. You want to say, I improved during my rookie season and I got better as a rookie and I can do even more in my sophomore season. And I feel like he can do those things. And he, he has already been overly impressive already as a rookie. And I just want to see him continue to grow and continue to become a better player. And I feel like he has been a better rookie than I have thought he would be. But I also see he has Markel Foles back and Jalen Suggs been out. And they have to run things differently. They have to play a different style. And I just don't want to get this season lost up. He's having an all-time great season just because it's tough to do what he has been able to do. And the fact that, you know, he hasn't done it, you know, for three months. Now he has to just do it for four more. And it's going to be interesting to see if he can average 20 for the entire season or will he fall down to that 19 range like Ben Dick, You know, he, he got through his rookie wall right now. And we'll see if he's able to improve and, and shoot better and get used to, you know, the inconsistency and minutes and touches and, and how they play. Or will, you know, Paulo end up just getting used to, you know, the lack of shooting of the Orlando Magic and just half his efficiency drop a little bit more, but the numbers stay the same. That can happen too. But other than that, continue to like, continue to subscribe. Quinn Wade, basketball and officer signing out. I'll be back with that instant analysis on the Milwaukee Bucks versus the Washington Wizards. Other than that, like on Facebook to show support. That will be in the description. Check out my channel. You can follow me on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Just click my channel and the banner will have just my socials. You can follow me on there. Check out basketball analysis and analysisplayground.com on Apple Podcasts and Google Podcasts if you want to listen to the podcast version of this video. If you have any thoughts of the rookies who I miss, who thinks that they should be mentioned, like the Shaden Sharps and the other rookies in this game, you know, I'm only trying to do the best of the best, the ones that's putting up the best numbers. Some of those guys will be mentioned eventually as their seasons improve and as they get used to the hard work that they have to put in each and every night to get better and greater at this game. These are the rookies that 
have impressed me the most. These are the rookies that deserve the most credit for what they have done. I know the numbers don't scream crazy, but, you know, this is something that's better than nothing. You know, these guys are really trying hard and doing the best that they can, and they deserve credit for that, in my personal opinion. Other than that, Coinway Basketball Analysis signing out, and I'll see you guys later tonight.